Hi, this is lesson five this week. Um, so hopefully by now you've kind of learned the basics, um, three chords, C, F, and G, and how to spell the basic seven Bisquick chords. And today we're going to talk about the two most common chord progressions. And I wish my teacher would have taught me this years ago, because going, I didn't really learn chords when I was learning how to play, and I'm finding from your emails and comments that you make that most of you out there haven't either. Um, when I was growing up, they didn't speak about chords very much. I learned triads and I learned the scales, but I never really learned what they did or how to use them. So now, I, now that I know chords, I think if I went back to college and took classical music again, it would have been a lot easier for me to understand what the composers were thinking when they wrote the music. So this little lesson I'm going to give you today, I think you're going to see it in almost every a piece, all of it or pieces of it in every song that you see. So um, this is a really simplified version of the two most popular chord progressions. Okay, we're going to continue on with the playing with no music. Um, this is lesson five and we're on page five. And last week we talked a little bit about playing the, the blues progression and the circle. But I'm going to teach you two chord progressions that you're going to find either all of or little pieces of in almost every song there is. Um, as we get more advanced um, in, in some of my other books we go into more advanced progressions. But these two seem to show up just about everywhere and in every key. So I want to take about oh, 10 minutes or so just to explain to you these two chord progressions. The first one is on page 5. It's called Playing the Blues. So all it is is C chord, F chord, C chord, and G chord. And we're going to use a G7 chord. <clears throat> so this is how I'd like you to play it. C chord is G, C, E. F chord is A, C, F. And you notice I underlined these, these notes, these letters, because they're the common notes. That's the finger you're not going to pick up between those two chords. F to C, the common note again is C. C to G, the common note is G. And back to C, the common note is G. Now, the 7 is that little F over there, and if you're not really quite very um, confident yet, just leave that F off. All right? So let's, let's play this chord progression and let's see how it sounds. So I'm just not going to turn on the rhythm. I'm just going to play C chord, F chord, C chord, and G chord. Remember I told you, you can learn those three chords without even looking down because of the common notes. C chord, up to the F chord, back to the C chord, and down to the G chord. Now, it's a lot more fun if you play them with rhythms. C chord, F chord, C chord, and G. Now, here's the key. Once you start doing this, you can pick different rhythms and it's totally going to change what your right hand might do. So let's start with a little country because that's kind of my favorite thing. And we'll push the introduction button so it kind of gives you a little chance to um, just get started. And it, it also gives you a little bit of an attitude for the intro. So just play the C chord first. All right, now my C chord's playing. I'm going to start, remember the very first lesson, I'm just going to start on a C, E, or a G, and I'm just going to start walking around, and don't walk very far, just walk a little ways, and just walk up and down, F chord, C chord, G. scared, you can just walk up, now 
are. It doesn't sound like much yet, but I'm sure that's how songs get written. You, what you need is that basic structure of that chord progression, and then whatever you do with your right hand is coming from you. It, <clears throat> you'll be playing along, and pretty soon you'll start going, Oh, I hear a song, just because you were noodling with your right hand. So again, it's C chord, F, C, G. Now that time I went to G chord. Okay, so you can just sit go C, G, C, G, C. Now, if I switch, and I go over to, uh, let's say, a, a foxtrot or a big band swing kind of sound. The guy that wrote In the Mood, watch what he was doing. He was just playing a C chord. noodling around rolling the notes in the chords and he came up with a song called in the mood um, lots of songs work progression in dozens and uh, actually hundreds of songs. Now if you use if you're using the circle here's the chords that we used C one to the right F back to C and one to the left G. So we went C F C and G. If you start with a G chord the chords that you're going to play are G C G and D. If you start with an F chord, the chords that are going to go in the key of F, F, B flat, F, and C, and so forth, all the way around the circle. And in my emergency chord book, this is explained in detail, but we're not going to go there today. Okay? Now, my, my, the, the most fun, <laughs> my tongue's all tied up, the, I think that the chord progression that I like the most is called 16251. And I don't have time to explain it, but I, well, I will. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight notes in a C scale. If I turn each one of these into a chord, C would be chord number one, D would be chord number two, three, F is four, G is five, six is, or A is six, B is seven, and C is back, same as one. If I turn the first note of any scale into a chord, it's always a major chord. If I turn the fourth step is a major and the fifth step is a major. That's why C, F, and G are the first three chords you ever learn because it's in the easiest key, the key of C. Two, three, and six in the key of C. D minor, E minor, and A minor. So those would be the minor chords in that key. Now, if you use the circle, it's a, it's a lot easier. You don't have to learn the scales. The, the relative minor for C, is it, it's always at 9 o'clock. So the relative minor for F is D minor, and so forth. So if you just go to 9 o'clock, you'll see, and, and I think my, my clock's a little bit, not exactly on, but C to A minor. That's the relative minor. So C, once you drop down to the A minor, you just come back up the road to get back to C. So it's C, A minor, D minor, G, and C. So that's the one, six, two, five, one chord progression. And it looks like this. Actually, I think if you remember when you played the piano when you were a kid, I think every kid that ever walked into my retail piano store did this. Over and over. Okay, that's the one 
the six two five one chord progression. It's C, A minor, D minor, G. Okay, that looks like an F chord, but it's actually D minor six. Okay, so this is the same as. All right, so we're gonna learn these four chords, and you're gonna be shocked at how often you see this chord progression. Sometimes you'll see it C, D minor, G7, C. You'll see bits and pieces of it in a song. And once you learn this, even the music that you read now is going to be easier because you're going to go, ah, I, I heard that chord progression already. So C chord, you're going to play G, C, E. A minor, you're going to play A, C, E. And you notice C is the common note. D minor, you're going to play A, D, F. A is the common note. And G7, you're going to play G, B, D, F, and F is the common note. And I, you know you can play the chords any way you want. This way you don't have to look down ever. If you just learn them, C chord, C chord, A minor, D minor, G7. Okay, look, I'll do it up here so you can see too. It's C chord. Then all you have to do to get to A minor is take your little finger and move it up one. Now I'm going to hold the A and move these two. Then I'm going to keep these two. And there's D and there's G7. So C, A minor, D minor, G7. All right? So practice that over and over and over and over. Now, if you're a child, if, if you were born um, in high school in the 60s, like me, in the 50s, then you might want to take like a, a ballad or some kind of a, an old uh, ballad kind of rhythm. And let's see if we can find one here. Well, I didn't prepare very, very well, so. So let's just put on a little A minor, D minor, and G. C, A minor. Now, the song that comes to mind always that gets played with this chord progression is this. music in me and I really can play and <clears throat> I don't profess to be the world's most incredible musician I think I'm a really good teacher because I learned exactly the way you're learning I 
I just never had anyone tell me that I could do this. So it took a long time before I would even begin to sit down and try and pick out a song by ear. But all of these little things that I'm doing now all led me to the place where at least I'll sit down and make an attempt to play a song by ear. Now, in lesson seven, we're going to talk about different styles that you can you, that you can use. So, if you're not playing with rhythm and you're playing it on acoustic piano, this gets kind of boring, you know, just to sit and go. It gets it gets really kind of monotonous because the the chord gets kind of muddy because it's down lower. Um, you can try and move it up here, but then you're kind of too high. So in lesson seven, we're going to talk about little things you can do with your left hand. So you can roll the chord like this. Or just to get some guts and break that chord up. Or just do this. Just move your hand and just don't let it just lay there. And I think that's the hardest thing for a piano player when they're trying to learn to play by ear is what do you do with this hand? So that'll be in a few, in a few weeks and uh, we'll, we'll discuss that. So remember this week I want you to learn two chord progressions. C, F, C, and G and then the one, six, two, five, one chord progression. Okay? I hope you enjoyed the lesson today. Very simple to do and lots of fun, especially if you're playing on a piano, a digital piano, or a keyboard, or an organ that has rhythms that you can play the backgrounds. It makes it a lot more um, interesting to listen to and a lot more fun. And for me, it's the best way to get an attitude that I wouldn't normally be able to get on an acoustic piano. So for myself, having the background rhythms while I'm practicing these chords kind of inspires me to make my right hand a little more interesting to listen to. And next week we'll talk about what you can do with your right hand to make it more interesting to listen to also. So what I'd like to do is remind you of the books that I have. Um, this one's going to be really important to you. If you are not really, a, a really very well acquainted with chords and how they work, this book has everything in it you need to know. From the day one, I don't know anything about chords, all the way up to learning the circle and how it works. And if you've never played the piano before or read music or understand key signatures or uh, anything like that, this book is um, everything you need to know to play the piano. And I could put, and it does say, or keyboard there. Um, I, I have looked at every method book there is, and in order to get all the information that's in this little book, you probably have to buy four or five regular books. There's no songs in it, but all the information that you need if you have any questions about music. Then I did uh, this book, uh, every workshop I've ever done. It's kind of a continuation of what we're doing now with playing by ear. It will help you um, with some different patterns that you can learn and all kinds of things. Uh, and it's directed uh, quite a bit at the organ also. Um, if you haven't even started playing the piano yet and you're not, you don't know quite what to purchase or how to find a teacher or how to go about learning to play the piano, this book I'm really proud of. It's everything you need to know before you start to play the piano. So I talk about the different kinds of keyboards that you can purchase, the digital pianos, do you want a grand piano or an upright, or even an organ. Uh, I love playing the organ. So uh, it talks about how to find a teacher, uh, how to start kids on the piano because I love teaching kids, and taking care of your piano and finding the right piano course. And there's lots of websites and I'll fill you in on those uh, at the last lesson of the websites that you can go to purchase books. And then my last book is So Much to Learn and Not Enough Years Left to Learn Them. Um, it's kind of also a continuation of the other books that I've written. And uh, I just put in a lot of little cheating hints that I've learned over the years uh, in this little book. Um, someone told me uh, a few weeks ago in a comment they made, 
it's they're not the fattest books and when they got them they had ordered everything and it came in a package only about that thick and but they said as they started to read them they realized that it's not how fat the book is it's what's in the book that counts so there's so much information out there about music that is so confusing to people and I'm learning that sometimes just just bringing it down easy to understand is what most people are looking to do just to have fun with their music so I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and try it I, I think you're gonna find that if you just have um, a little bit of guts and I wish I had my guts t-shirt on right now um, that's all it takes to make your right hand go if your left hand knows those two chord progressions your right hand will just take off and do its thing see you next week